Industry 4 is um, social and technological transformation of the world. It's about uh, people, it's about technology, it's about organizations. It's also about the use of uh, digital tools and technologies, uh, uh, data, automation, advanced mat materials for sustainable and uh, smart uh, services, factories and uh, organizations. Industry 4 is about merging uh, both virtual and physical worlds, offering uh, new opportunities, aiming to improve uh, productivity, uh, reduce costs, improve quality, changing the entire supply chain and uh, allowing mass personalization. At the University of Manchester, we are taking the, the necessary steps uh, to consolidate our position as a world leading uh, hub, uh, offering uh, industry 4.0 solutions for engineering, uh, um, health and uh, uh, social sciences. The university has a rich cultural environment, uh, world leading research. Um, together with the industry, we share a common language um, and as I mentioned, uh, the university is uh, uh, conducting uh, world-leading research in uh, many aspects around Industry 4.0, uh, like uh, Internet of Things, uh, uh, Big Data, Robotics, uh, um, Cybersecurity. And in particular, uh, in the manufacturing group, the group I'm uh, leading here at the School of, uh, of MACE, we are focusing on additive manufacturing for mass personalization. We are using uh, um, advanced materials uh, to create uh, morphing structures, structures that can uh, uh, that are able to sense the environment and to respond to the environment. We are using additive manufacturing to print cells in order to create uh, tissue constructs. Uh, and we are also focusing uh, on uh, new concepts around uh, human-centric uh, manufacturing because, as I mentioned, Industry 4 is about uh, technology, but it's also about uh, people. Hello, my name is Nikolai Mekhanjiev. I'm a professor of Enterprise Information Systems at Alliance Manchester Business School. And uh, I've been asked to, uh, to talk about our work in Industry 4.0. It's normally I start with the vision behind Industry 4.0, which is the vision of extreme flexibility and personalization, where we can, for example, if I would like to have a smartphone, which doesn't exist at the moment, maybe combining the best of class uh, camera with the best of class uh, from iPhone, with the best of class screen from Samsung, and with the uh, sort of modular design for, for input and fingerprints from LG, I can do that and I create a unique personalized smartphone taking the best of class components from different manufacturers. We also talk about uh, new uh, ways of improving the efficiency and the effectiveness of the manufacturing production so that we can remove the unskilled low level manual labor and we can create ecologically sustainable uh, flexible production facilities back in our doorstep in Europe rather than outsource them uh, far away. Uh, so this is the vision of Industry 4.0. In the UK, it's also known as smart manufacturing. Uh, this relies on the capabilities of contemporary technologies. The first relevant technology pillar is the Internet of Things, which allows us to deploy thousands of sensors, capturing information about the machines, being able to predict when a machine is likely to break down, creating an in silico image of our factory in, inside the computer. Once we have this image, this model of the current status of the factory, we can then deploy artificial intelligence reasoning to allow us to find new, more optimal ways to do our manufacturing production. Uh, of course, in helping us to do that, we have a 3D printing, which allows us to print new forms, shapes, uh, which are not possible to produce with the traditional manufacturing methods and also allows us to bypass some of the uh, more commoditized suppliers for one-off products for which we don't have a sufficient volume to, to, to buy from, uh, from, from them in bulk. And the uh, uh, key aspect of Industry 4.0 technologies, of course, are ro robots, which are there to replace the low-level manual work uh, and not to replace workers, but to increase the... Uh, the, the um, the, skill, uh, the skills required 
from those jobs in the industry so that people which go to industry would have a more enjoyable experience they would not just be working the low level uh, manual uh, tasks which robots would take over um, and here's the role of the university we need to be here to provide the level of education required uh, for us to be able to work with the technology and to be able to uh, employ people in more design oriented in more problem solving roles in the in the industry where what our research is focused at the moment is to bring the bridge the gap between the vision and the technology uh, which is uh, where the complexity of all the coordination dependencies in contemporary manufacturing stands. Uh, if you think about uh, a one-man artisan workshop, it is extremely flexible. It could be doing different things in the morning, different products in the afternoon. Uh, it is just the people in that workshop and the, uh, the, the tools they have. This is not so in the contemporary manufacturing. Setting up a, a car manufacturing facility, a Volkswagen for example, takes a number of years before a new model is designed and set up and, and grows into production. So the vision of extreme flexibility hits the problems of uh, millions of coordination dependencies between activities, resources and people inside the factory. And at the moment in my research team we create approaches and methods allowing us to resolve this complexity of these dependencies and to create very flexible manufacturing layouts inside if we to speak about inside the factory and also uh, very flexible outside relationships where we can create on-demand teams of suppliers ready to deliver that unique product or very small batch uh, scale products for our, for our factories so uh, this is uh, the research at the universities at the moment is there to bridge the gap between the vision of extremely flexible lot size of one manufacturing and the underlying capabilities of technologies keeping in mind how complex contemporary manufacturing facilities are. Uh, recent examples is we're working with Airbus uh, in Industry 4.0 project aiming to create dynamic collaborations between suppliers which can provide parts on demand for unique configurations of aircraft. Okay, thank you. So my name is Phil Withers, I'm Regis Professor of Material Science here at the University of Manchester and I'm also Chief Scientist for the Henry Royce Institute for Advanced Materials. This is a new international uh, centre uh, focusing on the development of advanced materials here in the UK, bringing together Manchester, Cambridge, Imperial, Oxford, Leeds, Sheffield, Liverpool, National nu Nuclear Labs and the Centre for Fusion Energy at Cullum. What my particular take on Industry 4.0 is really the, where, where, do material science, where does material science come in? Nearly all manufacturing is involved in making material, in turning materials into products. And so it's very, very important that if we're going to make a high quality product, products that we understand the role of material science in controlling the quality, the performance and the price of a manufactured product. So Industry 4.0 promises to revolutionize the way we use materials in manufacturing. It will help us to better understand how we manufacture that product and it will enable us to create a digital twin of that material. This is a digital uh, version of the material with its properties and microstructure. This enables us to understand the role of different manufacturing uh, processes on that material and will provide a kind of genetic fingerprint, a computational thread that uh, describes how the manufacturing process leads to the final properties in the manufactured product. The really exciting thing is how do we put that material science into the Industry 4.0 process. Despite the fact we've been measuring microstructures for 150 years uh, looking at metals and looking at materials to, set, to look at their microstructure using optical microscopes, electron microscopes, x-ray scanning them to understand their microstructure. We still have no way to digitize that microstructure. It's still just a picture. So we need to learn how to turn pictures into information so that that can become part of the digital thread for manufacturing. I see that as a critical aspect 
of Industry 4.0 and one that the ROIS, I think, will play an important part in achieving. This university is a very large university with very many different, uh, different aspects. But the, uh, the, the opportunity comes through the uh, Royce Institute as a way of bringing together material scientists from the University of Manchester along with those of our other partners to do completely new things. To be able to put together manufacturing, far high throughput test and development and high throughput imaging so that we can better understand the role of material science in the manufacturing of high quality products. Equally, this fast make, test, evaluate cycle will enable us to innovate new products as well as to better understand existing products. I see this as a major opportunity for Industry 4.0 here at Manchester.